go to the northern region because Zubeda is joining us yeah. via phone to give us an update mm -hmm. what's happening there. We'll get back to some more issues there. Yeah, okay. definitely. Mm. Yeah. And currently in the northern region, the case count is 11. Mm. We're hearing that massive contact tracing has begun. Okay. And so we're speaking to our correspondent in the northern region, Zubeda. Hello, good morning. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Zubeda. How are you? I'm fine, Bella. Okay, I'll, I'll need you to, you know, <laughs> sound a bit more. I'm sure you probably just woke up. But give us an update. We're hearing that contact tracing has begun officially in the northern region. Is that true? Yeah, uh, we're talking about the northeast region, Bella. Um, that is um, the Mamfugu and um, the local Gambada area. Um, you know, northeast region has recorded some two cases. Mm. Um, it's it first recorded um, a case on the um, on the ninth of um, April. Sorry, on the tenth of April it was a Friday, and then this person actually died. So this was a young man who also had asthma, mm. and he had reported to the Wale Wale Municipal Hospital on um, April um, sixth, which was a Monday, and. Just within one hour after he was sent to the hospital by his family members, he died. Oh. And then, um, unfortunately, his um, mortal remains was um, released to the family for burial. And that was on Wednesday, 8th mm. April. Then on Friday, um, 10th April, the results, uh, the samples that were sent to the key Kubansi Center for Collaborative um, Research uh, came out and it, it tested positive. Mm. And so it even caused some kind of um, fear and uh, anxiety among even the, the immediate family members because, like I said, the, the, the dead body of this boy was released to the family on Wednesday, mm -hmm. the evening of Wednesday, um, April 8th. It was released and to the family? It wasn't buried... In, in, in a way where, I mean, the way that suspected bodies are buried, it was mm -hmm. just released to them, and so they, 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 they also know. I mean, the family knowing that the boy was asthmatic, mm -hmm. thought that he died of asthma, so they, they handled him like any other dead body that we handle in in, in, in our homes. Zubair, so hold on, hold on, Be, before so you continue. Can you hear the, me? The, the, hello. Can you hear me? Let, let I, me get I, something I, I right. Did the family at the point where they got the body know that he had been he had tested positive for COVID nineteen? Come again, Bella. At the point where the family received the body, were they aware that he had tested positive for COVID nineteen? Uh, no, they were not aware. So, like I said, the the boy was at the hospital on Monday, April fifth. Uh huh. He died within an hour on Wednesday, April eighth. The body was released to the family for burial. And the hospital then officials 10th, also had yes, not received... The hospital. Then on 10th, Friday, 10th April, the results came and tested positive. Okay. So the body was released to the burial family before the mm. results arrived in, in, in Wale Wale and then it was communicated to the family. And that is why I said that it, it, it brought some anxiety mm -hmm. to the immediate family. So the very uncle of the boy, who actually handled the cops before yeah. burial, once he heard the announcement, or once the family was told that the, the boy tested positive, he went into self-quarantine. Mm. And for two weeks, he's, he's actually been indoors all by himself in his room. The other family members actually, first of all, resisted any attempt by the health um, authorities to take their samples because for them, if any of them test positive, for them they think that it is the hospital that has exposed all of them to the case. So they were actually angry. But mm. after a day, they calmed down and they subjected themselves to um, the contact tracing. And so they are at the immediate family and yeah. some seven nurses at the Wale Wale Municipal Hospital are part of the contacts that have been traced. So, so, so in total, how many people are we looking at? How many family members? Because you've mentioned that seven uh, health officials, but how many family members? So uh, uh, the whole total is um, 
we have some 43 people, and then out of the 43, we have seven nurses mm. from the Waliwali Municipal Hospital there. Okay, but then, I mean, the, the president also had announced earlier that we should not have more than 25 people uh, converge at one place. If we're saying 43 of those, then that means that uh, if we subtract the seven, then there's still more people who may have come into contact with the body. And I'm talking about the family members during the time of burial. And so that on its own is also uh, a way of breaking the law. What are the authorities saying about that? So um, for the, that side of the story, we, we, we've not been told about how many people uh -huh. went to bury. But then okay. it, 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 I don't also even think that many people went to bury their body because I had a conversation with the, an uncle of this disease. And what he said was that the body was decaying, the mortal remains was decaying. So it was, it was more like, and it was also released to them in the later part of Wednesday. Mm. So there was no way they could actually make merry, kind of, I mean, gather like we okay. used to gather when we are barren. So it took just a few family members, the men, of course, that went to um, bury him. Mm. And I got the opportunity to speak with an auntie of the boy, and he said, she said that because the result came out positive, and people have already heard that the boy died of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Even her own friends that usually would have come around because she's bereaved did not come. So she wow. was actually even facing stigma. So because of that stigma, people have not actually even gone there because already they were suspecting whether he died of COVID. So mm -hmm. people were very cautious. It's just the immediate family members that got in touch, I mean, in contact with the mortal remains. But, um, for the, the town, I think, people did not go close to the body. And the barrier wasn't the usual barrier that we witnessed or the usual Islamic barrier that we witnessed. Because one, like I said, the body was released to the family the later part of the day, which was almost in the evening. And mm. the family, because the body was decaying, just had to do something quickly and go and dispose it of before it got out of hand. Oh. Now, let me also bring in this. The Walewale Municipal Hospital does not have a mock. They are mock, um, according to the medical superintendent there, Dr. Abdullahi, had actually broken them. So they only have something they call the holding center, which is a container. The containers that we use for shops. Hmm. That is where they hold bodies. And the air condition that even I mean, has been fitted in that container has also developed a fault. So it is very warm in there. And that is why the family had to actually demand the hospital that, I mean, demand from the hospital authorities to preserve the body. Because this body had lied in the holding center from 6th, Monday 6th of April to that 8th of April mm -hmm. without any form of preservation. No, they didn't inject the body. There was no food that could cook, I mean, preserve the body. So the body was actually decaying. So the family had gone to the hospital on Wednesday, April 8th, to demand from hospital authorities that they preserve the body. And they even made suggestions to the family, the hospital, that either they transferred the body to the Tamil Chain Hospital, where there is a morgue, mm -hmm. or the Bolgatanga Hospital, where there is an active morgue, where they could preserve the body and wait until the result was released. But that didn't happen. So later in the day, hospital officials called the family and they handed the body back to them. And so once they handed the body to them, they had no option than to go and bury. Wow. This, this is very serious. But I mean, going back to the issue of stigma, does it mean that education hasn't gone that far in the northeastern region? So um, stigma, I will tell you whether I should blame it on um, educate, lack of education or I should blame it on the fact that the stigma that we actually see around these reports are actually um, uh, uh, rippling effects from education that we've gotten. Because, you know, once, the, once we recorded COVID, the first case in the world in Wuhan, mm. the, the communication was that it was a very deadly uh, and virus, virus yeah. and it was very contagious. And so anybody that came into contact or, I mean, or tested positive was seen as um, more like a monster or something. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I, I don't know what I should say. It is rather the, the kind of communication that went out from the onset that has brought the stigma. The stigma is not only uh, related to the Northeast case, but here in Tamale, even the hotel that the foreigners, that mm -hmm. 10 foreigners that tested positive were one flip. Yeah. And so we had 19 uh, active tests. The hotel that uh, was used as a um, quarantine center, yeah. houses around the hotel, resident, there, there, there was this immediate house behind the hotel. Mm -hmm. Now, the people in that house were complaining. And because the community has subjected them to some kind of stigma, that if they woke up in the morning and their children went to buy porridge, once they got to the porridge place where they were going to buy the porridge, yeah. the, those these children would be shouted at to just stay off the people that were standing there to buy the porridge. And they mm. would be asked to make form their own queue at a distance. So the stigma isn't just even about Northeast, but here even in the Northern region, it was an issue. And I remember in a conversation with the Northern Regional Coordinating Director, um, Mr. Isahaku, mm -hmm. he also mentioned that indeed, some residents that are living behind the hotel, not just the house that I have mentioned, but then other close residents had actually come to the RCC to yeah. come and lodge a complaint that people were discriminating against them. They couldn't communicate with anybody. They couldn't, I mean, some wouldn't even respond to their duties. So they actually came to complain to the Northern Regional Coordinating Director, who had assured them that they would send officers from the information department mm -hmm. to go and sensitize these people and also okay. would send officers from the Zoom Lion to go and also spray the area, especially those close houses, so that at least that would ease the, the, the anxiety in the minds of people. Okay, now, now apprise us on that one person um, that ran away from the isolation center. What's happening? Have they found her? Uh, up to now, I must say that no one has an information or an idea of where this person is, as to whether the person has died, as to whether the person has managed to come out of this virus, hmm. as, I mean, healthier, as to what, I mean, nobody has an information on who and where this person is. With the exception of the authorities that came into contact with her, they know, at least they know her, her details and then her physical looks, but nobody else is aware of who this person is, and mm. so we are not even aware if the person is next to us or the person has died or anything. No information okay. has been heard from anybody on this opinion that All right. fled now, from now, the quarantine center. Since, since the president lifted the lockdown in Greater Accra and Kumasi, what kind of signal has been sent to the northern region and the other uh, regions up north as well? How are they responding to this, even though they weren't under lockdown? Has it sent some confusion as to whether the disease still exists? How are they really reacting to it? So, um, there the, the are mixed reactions here. Um, one is the fact that many people were not expecting that the lockdown will be lifted anytime soon. In fact, people were actually expecting that. People have spoken with were actually expecting that some mm. other regions were going to be added to the Lord, especially the Eastern region. Okay. But then it didn't turn out to be so. So for a section of the people, they are still wondering why lockdown was lifted. But for another section, this is, I mean, the news was the best they, they, could, they could receive mm. at that time. And I'm talking about our brothers and sisters that, are in the cities and they are doing this KIA business, the headquarters. Yeah. For them, for the three weeks they have been back home, it's not been very easy coping with life. Mm. And they, they couldn't wish for any better announcement than what the president gave to them okay. on, Friday, on Sunday. So for them, it was time to pick their bases and their, their, their um, pad Tools and get back to work. And get back to the cities okay. and start work. Get back to the city as in get back to Accra and Kumasi. Accra, Kumasi. They are on their Chema, way back. Techiman, everywhere. All right. Okay. Anyway, Zubeda Ismail, thank you so much for speaking to us. And she's our correspondent from the northern region, updating us on the situation in the northeastern region where one person died of COVID-19.